you're going to run into energy constraints, right? Because I don't think anyone's built a gigawatt single training cluster yet. I mean, just to, I guess, put this in perspective, it's like around the size of like a meaningful nuclear power plant only going towards training a model. Artificial intelligence is killing our planet, and our climate change is about to go from bad to worse. Besides making our lives easier, AI is seen as the technology that would help save our planet. As much as we'd like to say that's just a way to catch your attention, it might actually be true. Some researchers have just discovered that the AI industry is causing more damage than we think, and the tech giants are keeping it a secret. In a recent meeting at the World Economic Forum, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman shared a severe concern. He warned that the AI industry is leading us into a vast energy crisis because of how much power it uses. While AI is doing amazing things in fields like manufacturing and healthcare, there's still a big issue with how it's powered. Researchers at the University of Massachusetts Samhurst discovered that training just one AI model can release over 626,000 pounds of carbon dioxide. That's the same amount of pollution from about 62.6 cars driven for a whole year. That's not all. In 2020, training an AI model only needed about 27 kilowatt hours of energy. However, as of 2022, it required a staggering 1 million kilowatt hours, a jaw-dropping increase of 37,000 times. That's just how energy-hungry AI technology is. When AI companies like OpenAI were asked about how much pollution their servers cause, they refused to answer. Microsoft, who has invested billions of dollars into OpenAI, also didn't want to share how much pollution comes as a result of creating their AI tools. Doesn't that imply that they're hiding something? The truth is that creating AI chips like graphics processing units, GPUs, takes 10 to 15 times more energy than regular computer chips. While some people have tried to calm their worries about AI's energy consumption, the truth tells a different story. All signs point to a significant increase in energy demand because of new data centers to be built and the carbon emissions these centers produce. Unfortunately, most of these data centers will depend on fossil fuels, which would lead to significant jumps in carbon emissions. Deadly may just be understating the fact, as experts have warned that these problems could get even worse. In a recent study from February 2024, Professor Joshua Posky from Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador in Canada discovered that 40% of the places making semiconductors are in areas with a significant risk of running out of water between 2030 and 2040 because of the amount of water needed for cooling data centers. Keep in mind that these areas are already really stressed about how much water they have. Another new study forecasts that by 2027, servers running AI could use as much as 134 terawatt hours of electricity each year. That's about as much power as countries like Argentina and Sweden use. As people want more advanced AI systems, data centers will need more specialized chips and servers, which means one thing, the need for electricity increases. AI uses a lot of energy and involves worrying materials. Manufacturers use hundreds of chemicals to make AI chips, including a highly toxic group known as PFAS, short for per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. PFAS are essentially for creating semiconductors, but they pose serious risks. They can accumulate in living organisms because they're absorbed faster than someone can remove them building up in the body over time. This can lead to severe health issues, including various cancers. Even though the semiconductor industry has cut down on some PFAS uses, there's still some reliance on these dangerous chemicals. And that's not all. The variety of minerals needed to produce chips has dramatically increased, from just 11 to over 60. This includes minerals like gallium and germanium, which are problematic because they don't have federal quality standards in the US and elsewhere. Plus, our understanding of how these minerals affect health and the environment is still quite limited. As the US Environmental Protection Agency noted, is there a solution though? Big tech companies like Google, Microsoft, and Nvidia are leading the way in AI research and its applications, so renewable energy is needed to handle this massive increase in power needs. Even though tracking exactly how much energy these AI companies are using is challenging, it's evident that if we do not manage this growth, life-threatening environmental problems await. Switching data centers to wind, solar, and other renewable energy sources could reduce pollution. Making AI chips more efficient could also lower the power these systems need. 
However, we're in a race against time to stop the massive rise in CO2 emissions. Experts have warned that we'll face a big crisis with AI sustainability if we don't act quickly. This is why major tech companies like Nvidia, Intel, and AMD are hurrying to make changes for the better. In the past few years, Intel has shaken up its production game, pouring tens of billions of dollars into expanding and improving its manufacturing sites worldwide. They've committed to being eco-friendly by getting more than 90% of their electricity from renewable sources like wind and solar. Intel's significant goal is to run entirely on renewable energy by 2030. Intel also made headlines with their latest creation, the Gaudi 3 Artificial Intelligence Chip. This new chip is part of a larger movement in the tech industry to build advanced chips that can power AI models, like the ones used in OpenAI's ChatGPT. This shows Intel's commitment not only to innovation, but also to making tech that can handle the future demands of AI technology. But it's not just Intel making waves in the tech world. Nvidia, another big name in the chip industry, is also pushing the boundaries of AI technology. Nvidia's newest chips, like the B200 GPU and the GB200, could change the game for businesses by making AI applications run faster and more efficiently. Nvidia announced these fantastic developments on March 18th during a keynote speech by their CEO, Jensen Huang, at their annual developer conference. The B200 GPU is especially impressive. It has 208 billion transistors and can deliver up to 20 petaflops of FP4 processing power. You might be asking, what on earth is a petaflop? It's okay if that term seems unfamiliar, but have you ever wondered what makes your computer run super fast? That magic comes from something called flops. Flops stands for floating point operations per second and it's a way to measure how quickly a computer can process information. Most of our computers operate at a speed called a teraflop, which is already pretty fast. But then there's the petaflop, which is a whole new level of speed. A petaflop means a computer can do 1,000 trillion or one quadrillion operations in a single second. That's incredibly fast, like a superhero level of computer speed. Ultron incoming! So for the B200 GPU that poses 208 billion transistors and deliver up to 20 petaflops of FP4 processing power, you know that that's a lot of computing muscle. This means businesses can do more with their data, and AI is moving faster than ever. Nvidia also showcases the GB200, a supercharged chip that teams up the B200 GPUs with one Grace CPU to pump up performance. They claim it can speed things up to 30 times faster than before for tasks like understanding and generating human-like text, which is perfect for big AI projects. The GB200 is the first chip in Nvidia's new Blackwell series of AI graphics processors. This new setup isn't just faster, it's also built to be more efficient. Nvidia says it could reduce costs and energy use by up to 25 times compared to its earlier model, the H100. This means it's good for speeding up technology, saving money, and reducing environmental impact. Seems like some good news at last. And just like you may have already guessed, governments are not left out in the development and advancement of AI. Governments of various nations have begun to take moves to encourage AI expansions. In the United States, for example, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy launched a website on May 5, 2021. The name? AI.gov. So what's AI.gov all about? Well, it's your go-to spot to connect with all the latest on how the federal government is pushing forward with artificial intelligence. This site is packed with everything you might want to know, policy documents, AI applications, and the freshest news from the agencies and advisory boards steering the National AI Initiative. Now, you might be wondering, what's this National AI Initiative? Great question. Created by Congress, this initiative is all about keeping the U.S. at the forefront of AI research and development. It's about ensuring the U.S. is the leader in using trustworthy AI, not just in government, but everywhere, from public to private sectors. And hold on, there's more. In 2022, the U.S. government didn't just talk a big game. They backed it up with a massive $4.38 billion investment in AI. Shows you they are really serious about making AI a big part of our future. On top of that, prior to the recent direct AI development, the Biden administration launched the first Chips for America funding opportunity, which aims to support semiconductor companies like Intel, 
producing chips in America, with $50 billion to oversee, revitalizing the U.S. semi industry, and $39 billion in sole incentives for companies producing them. That means that the government supports the investment of companies that decide to produce chips in America. Another big leap for the advancement in AI overall. The President Biden executive order signed in October 2023 also promotes safety and security in AI, innovation, and healthy competition. But these developments are everywhere, not just in the United States. So that does leave us with the question, do you believe there's light at the end of this tunnel? And that it's not doomsday yet? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We'll see you in the next one.